So here we have a 2021 Citroen EC4 electric car and in this video I'm going to give you my thoughts about this vehicle. So I bought this vehicle to use myself over the next few months, probably over the winter months and many regular viewers will know that I was previously driving a Hyundai Ioniq 38 kilowatt hour. So I fancy getting one of these because I've watched nearly every review video out there on YouTube about these cars and the general feedback from those is these are a very comfortable car. So that's why I fancied getting one. And actually I think they're quite similar to the Ionic in many ways. So this video isn't going to be a review video as such about this car. I don't generally make review videos because there's plenty of other people doing the same and making a better job than I would. But this is going to be my sort of initial feelings about this car after driving it now for two to three weeks and comparing it slightly to the Hyundai Ionic and just pointing out some of the things I think a lot of the other reviews are getting wrong. So firstly, let's just talk about comfort because all the reviews all say it's an incredibly comfortable car and they are right, it is. It's certainly much more comfortable than any other EV in this sort of price bracket. Obviously you can't compare it with something like um, an Audi with air suspension, but when you compare it with other cars at the similar sort of price bracket, yes, definitely these are incredibly comfortable. And that's quite surprising considering they've got 18 inch wheels as standard. They are quite a large wheel for this sort of size car and they've got 195 60 R18 tires. So they still kept quite a decent sidewall, um, which is why it is relatively comfortable. A lot of 18 inch wheels will have a much lower profile tire at probably 45, whereas this is 60. But even so, this has got huge wheels on but it is still comfortable. And Citroen achieved this by their damper setup, but some of the reviews say that the car wallows around a bit too much because of it. And maybe slightly it does, but really it isn't a thing. I've really sort of ragged this round country lanes and it grips really well and doesn't lean too much and isn't the issue that many reviewers are saying. And part of that comfort is also the seat design. And all the reviewers mention this because it's part of a Citroen marketing blurb. And supposedly these have got 15 millimeters of memory foam in the seats. But in reality, I don't really notice any difference between these seats and any others really. Maybe they are a little bit softer, but I haven't found them to be hugely comfortable. But then on the other side I haven't found them to be uncomfortable either. It did take a few days to get used to them. I've had to adjust the lumbar support all the way out because initially I didn't find them comfortable but they're not brilliant seats. I wouldn't say they were fantastic like a lot of reviewers are saying but again for a vehicle in this sort of price bracket they're okay. But after driving this for three weeks or so now I really am appreciating the comfort and uh, I am very much enjoying this car. Uh, particularly as I'm driving primarily on rural roads and the roads in the UK are terrible. Lots of potholes and uh, particularly on the very rural roads, often driving with the edge right in the dirt. And this car is lovely. I really am appreciating that little bit of extra comfort and softer suspension. So next, I'm just going to quickly just talk about the styling because that's the other thing I am also really appreciating about this car. I'm really enjoying the looks. Every time I get into it, I sort of just have this brief little thought, mm, that's a nice looking car. Um, I guess it's because it's this sort of SUV style. It's just chunky. The wheels are large. You've got good ground clearance underneath. It looks high raised. Um, almost a little bit um, Ford... Mackey, Mustang Mackey sort of styling, coupe back off the ground quite a bit. Um, the bit that I'm not too keen on is the front end, I guess primarily because of the Citroen badge, but the way the daytime running lights swoop up the bonnet there and the big LED lights, these, these are all LED, LED vision it says on there. Um, 
but it's not too bad. I do like the blue accents at the bottom and that's uh, got fog lights and cornering lights. Um, but from the side and the back, I think it's a good looking car. I think the back looks particularly good. I like the way that the black uh, contrast trim here with the black fin looks particularly good with white bodywork. I didn't initially like the way the lights went off at different angles, but I've got used to that. But yeah, I think it's a very good looking car. You've got fake air vents here, but if you didn't know they were fake, they look good. Um, the rear spoiler is very much like a Hyundai Ionic. Uh, where you've got split glass uh, if you're not used to that initially that sort of gets in your way when you're looking out the back but it's less uh, obtrusive than the Ionic um, but I quite like it I like the way the glass is blackened out as well at the back it's a good looking car and I quite like all the creases in the bodywork you've got a flat area there you've got large indentations on the bonnet to be honest it looks like I've had my wife on the bonnet but it all makes an interesting looking car and as I said after three weeks I'm still looking at it and having that sort of little gentle smile inside because I think it is a good looking car. So a lot of the reviews say this isn't a particularly fast car. I don't find that. I find it really pretty good actually. Um, but 0 to 60, 9.7 seconds which in EV terms yeah, it's not particularly fast, but when you compare it with combustion engine vehicles, it is. And as always with electric vehicles, you've got all the torque from zero. So they feel much more lively than the figures suggest. As for the motor, it's 100 kilowatt, which is exactly the same as the Hyundai Ioniq. So it's got the same motor output, the same 0 to 60 time, slightly less torque, but you really don't notice it. So overall, the performance is pretty much identical to a Hyundai Ioniq. So many reviews say this is a very quiet car, but I have seen reviews to say the opposite and say it's not. However, my initial feelings were when I first drove it was, wow, this is super quiet, particularly considering how large the wheels are. And um, yeah, it, it's one of the quietest electric cars. Um, even the tyre noise is very hushed. It's very... Um, you're very cocooned in here from the road noises and yeah for for this sort of price bracket This is definitely the quietest electric car out there and it's even quieter than the original Ionic which is very um, Aerodynamic and very low wind noise. So the only thing I notice with this car is there is a bit of wind noise around the door mirrors when you're doing above about 65 miles an hour you can hear the wind going across the mirror so you only sort of get that at dual carriageway and motorway speeds, but it really is very minor. And I think you can only hear that just because how quiet the rest of the car is. So yeah, overall, because of the comfort and the quietness, this is a very refined car and feels much nicer to drive than a car should be at this sort of price bracket. One thing that is quite good is the doors do wrap around the seals as well as you can see they wrap all the way around so you don't get dirt on the bottom of your trousers when you're getting in so that's something I'm going to appreciate as we're now coming into the winter months but one thing that is noticeable is how thick the seals are which you do get this with a lot of modern vehicles but it's quite noticeable when you're coming from a uh, Hyundai Ionic, which is probably a sort of an older bodywork design that when you're getting in it is a bit more of a reach across to lift your foot over to that sill and then the floor dishes out to the footwells and this does feel very thick. But part of that might be because the car sits higher so you are sort of stepping over that sill more than maybe that I was used to in the previous vehicle. But of course this has got that extra ground clearance, the vehicle sits higher, you've got that raised seating position slightly because it's that sort of modern SUV style vehicle. So really that's what I'm feeling probably more than the thickness of the seals is just that extra height when you're getting in and out. One other thing which isn't mentioned on other videos is this plastic insert here. This is just a bit of plastic um, inserted inside the door just for you know, effect and brighten up the interior a little bit. 
but if you're looking at the pictures or looking at other videos it looks like it should be a grab handle that looks like that should be a sort of a soft rubber or fabric handle that you can then grab but it isn't that's flush in the door and doesn't do anything has no function at all that is the handle there this particular car is a shine plus so top of the range and it's got all the goodies on it and um that's why i bought a shine plus um, i sort of held out until i found the right model um, and i'm glad i did because it's got all the gear on it which um, i've sort of been used to with all my previous vehicles and once you're used to this stuff you do really don't want to lose it particularly coming into the winter i wanted heated seats which this has got and it's also got a heated steering wheel as well and obviously that's very nice when you're coming into the winter months particularly on an electric vehicle but the shine plus version here is loaded with kit it's got all the safety kit derby radio um, it's really got everything in them um, and pretty much matches a hyundai ionic se for specification the only things that it's really missing is it doesn't have auto hold which uh, is a shame because that's something i really like and it doesn't have an electric seat and seat memories however with these you can have an electric seat for 150 quid but it's not standard on any of the models so it's an extra and uh, obviously this one doesn't have it but the shine plus has virtually everything else it's just a shame that i couldn't find one with the electric seats because that electric seat version also has a massage function built in which is a bit of a gimmick but it would have been nice to try but there aren't really many other options on the shine plus um, really it's just the electric seat option and uh, a sunroof but apart from that it's got pretty much everything in here so one thing that these cars do have which many others don't at this sort of price range is the heads up display here so as you've seen that plastic screen just came up and if i put my camera in line with my eyes you can probably just about see there the heads up display working it's very difficult to show this on a camera but in that you get your road speed the um, the speed you're traveling and the speed of the uh, roads at the time it also tells you when you're speeding and if i put uh cruise control on i don't know whether you can pick that up but it puts all the graphics of the distance um, between you and the car in front and all the cruise control and semi-autonomous driving graphics up there in the heads up display as well so that's quite nice and all that information is in color as well which is good and also if you come up to a speed camera it puts a speed camera in the heads up display so that's one thing one bit of tech which I am quite enjoying. I don't know why it doesn't project it into the windscreen though, like uh, let's say for example a Mazda MX-30 does because then it puts the graphics further out in, you, in your vision, sort of puts it beyond the end of the bonnet a bit more, whereas this is a bit closer to you. But maybe it's something to do with the way the windscreen rakes up. Um, maybe that's what it takes whether they can have a projected image onto the glass or whether they need this extra plastic uh, pop-up screen there um, also on the the uh, subject of windscreens the windscreen in the EC4 is very small it's quite upright and it is all quite narrow as well there's actually very little distance between the bottom of the mirror and the top of the screen there um, don't find it an issue whatsoever it's not really a negative but it is quite noticeable that the glass is very narrow sort of letterbox style and very upright very sort of again suv 4x4 style um, you don't have a particularly deep dash like you have on a more conventional style car but it's not a negative at all but i thought i'd just point it out that the windscreen does feel quite narrow and the roof feels like it's all sort of quite low but again it's not negative i quite like it it makes it feel slightly sporty i suppose so the other thing that all the reviews mention is you don't get very good range from these cars but i would sort of disagree with that 
Um, I think a lot of times the issue is reviewers only have cars for a few hours. They have press cars and they've got them just for a few hours or a day or a day or two. And naturally, when a, you get a car, you tend to try the performance and they sort of rag it a bit and you do that 0 to 62 test. And if you're going to drive these hard, then yeah, you're not going to get very good range, but it's no different to any other vehicle. Uh, these have got a 50 kilowatt hour pack with a 46, 47 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. Um, so the range is going to be uh, sort of appropriate for that size of battery, as it were. So um, coming from a Hyundai Ioniq with a 38 kilowatt hour pack, those are incredibly efficient. But this does a similar sort of range. I was quite surprised. These are quite efficient. I'm sort of getting around 200 miles range. Uh, and doing motorway driving about 175 mile range and that's with air conditioning on um, these have also got a heat pump by the way that's something no one else mentions um, so yeah they are a reasonably efficient car obviously not in Hyundai Ionic standards or any of the Hyundai or Kia vehicles they are generally the most efficient but if I push the buttons on the end of the stalk and have a look at some of my efficiency. So over 564 miles, that's not the total mileage I've done. I've done a lot more. This is only a few days ago I reset it. But I've averaged 4.0 miles per kilowatt hour. And then over the last 266 miles, I averaged 3.8. Uh, that's been with mo motorway driving. Um, so yeah, the efficiency is pretty good actually for a modern EV, uh, particularly for a Stellantis vehicle. So overall, I've been pretty, uh, I wouldn't say impressed, that's probably the wrong word, but I've, I've been, I found it quite adequate and certainly again, we're back to price point. When you're looking at this sort of price these are, to have a relatively new car, um, Okay, it's only got a 46 kilowatt hour battery, but I've been quite impressed with the range. And if you can charge from home, majority of people don't need any more than that range because you're going to start every day with a full battery pack. If you can't charge from home and you're reliant on public charging, then absolutely you're going to want more of a range on your electric vehicles. You're not going off charging too often. So yes, if you, if you can't charge from home, you're going to want a vehicle with a bigger battery. But if you can charge from home, this is perfectly adequate for, I would say, the majority of people that live in the UK. Because in the UK, the average is about 26 miles a day. Um, but on the range, what I found, I did a, a motorway drive at high speed and I was doing normal motorway speeds, you know, it was 70 plus, keep that bit quiet. But I was driving as fast as everyone else on the road and I drove for three hours motorway speeds okay it was pretty flat when i got back and i got back with only about 10 percent battery but it did three hours of driving which um the reality is a lot of people just aren't doing that amount of driving your car is for potting around locally um, but to be fair some people will and a lot of people uh, concentrate on range and say, well, I, I'm not going to get an EV till it does 500 miles. Well, fine. If you if you want to do that, you need to get a bigger battery EV. But for a lot of people, the range of this, I think, is perfectly adequate. And then finally, the other thing that I do like about this is the speakers. Being the Shine Plus, uh, it's got extra speakers. It, it's got an extra speaker in the middle there, and it's got a subwoofer in the boot. And if you crank it all up in your settings uh, which is pretty hidden you have to do it under your driver profile and then go to audio settings and then as you, as you can see I've got the I've got the bass all the way up to the top uh, if you put loudness on that does help at lower volumes um, but yeah the stereo does sound very good and we've got central speaker and the subwoofer again I've got them turned up a bit but it's a good sounding system, again, for the price point. And that subwoofer is under the boot there. One little thing I don't like though, is when you push the on and off button, a quick push doesn't do anything like it would in virtually every other car. 
and what I find is I get in, give it a quick push and it hasn't started so then I have to do it a second time and at the moment I'm running and what you've got to do is push and hold for about a second and now that's turned it off and that takes some getting used to. Uh, almost every time I start or stop the car I'm doing it twice because I'm not holding it in long enough but that's something that I'm sure I'll get used to. A quick thing about the safety kit this has got an awful lot of kit it's got lane keep, uh, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, um, you've got your, your lane assistant where it does the sort of steering push you back and all that sort of stuff um, which is one of the reasons why I bought a Shine Plus because I wanted all of that stuff because uh, you get all that in Hyundai Onyx. However, when I first got this, I really did think, where is all this kit? Um, and I was driving it for two days and I couldn't find any of the stuff. Heck, I could obviously find your adaptive cruise control and stuff here, but none of the, the lane keep was never kicking in. And I had to go back to the specs and look up whether in this model year, whether it did actually come with it all, and it does. Um, the blind spot monitoring was just never coming on, but it is, it all does work. You get a yellow spot in the corner of your mirror, but it doesn't come on very long and I was missing it. And the other thing I noticed is it doesn't come on on the um, passenger side when you're overtaking trucks on a dual carriageway and pulling in. A lot of the time it doesn't come on on that side. It is working and this does work, but it doesn't come on anywhere near as much as it was on, in the Ionic. And the lane keep isn't activating anywhere near as much. Um, maybe it's just because I'm a good driver <laughs> and it's not needed. But I've done some tests and sort of on rural roads like this, you get near the edge, so the Ionic would be pushing you back and it feels like you're driving a clown's car. It feels like the wheels aren't connected to the um, steering wheel. And that's why most people generally turn it off. Uh, but in this, it very rarely kicks in. And when the lane keep does kick in and it flashes up there on the dash, um, it doesn't sort of jerk you back like it will. If you're holding the steering wheel tight, you steer through it without really getting any feedback. So some people will like that, and I'd say the majority of people would like it um, because it's really inobtrusive and it's not sort of correcting you all the time. Um, but it did make me wonder for the first few days whether firstly the equipment was actually fitted to the car and secondly, was it working? But it is, I've done tests and it's all working, it's all activated. But what you find on this is it's very subtle and that's probably a good thing and I have never had to turn it off down here. Whereas a lot of drivers would because on most cars it, it just gets in the way, particularly if you're driving on rural roads where there aren't curbs and there aren't white lines. Um, but yeah, uh, it's got all the gear, but most of the time I don't notice it. It's not getting in my way as a driver. And even when it does, if you're holding the steering wheel tight, you don't really feel the pushback and you can steer through it without it going mad. But on other cars, uh, it's not as subtle as it is in this uh, Citroen EC4. So that's my initial feelings about the Citroen EC4. And I'm really appreciating the comfort this car gives and that sort of refinement with the lower uh, noise levels. Um, there's a few little quirks and a few things I don't like. I don't like the gear selector and I don't like the lack of regen you have with the Stellantis vehicles, but you do get used to all those other things. Uh, I'm, not, I'm also missing that auto hold, but it's got some extras like the heads up display and um, I do like the looks. So overall, so far, I am very impressed and I'm pretty impressed with the efficiency and um, I'm going to make more videos about that and I'm going to have this over the colder winter months. I'll make some videos about winter efficiency and how the heating affects the efficiency. So what videos do you want to see? What do you want to know about this car? Let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to make the videos that you want to see while I'm driving this. So I've got some videos filmed already which will be coming out on the channel over the next few months. I won't release them all at the same time otherwise the channel will just become a Citroen EC4 channel. 
but uh, do have a look at the new playlist which again I'll put in the video description below where you can see those other videos which have uh, gone live and obviously more will be added to that list all the time.